Hello. Uh, how many people here feel pretty good about the unit testing that you do? Okay, not bad, not bad. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's what I'll be talking about today. Let me get to my slides. There we are. All right, so I am Michael Starks, and I work at Trumo BCT. We actually create uh, devices that allow you to donate blood and also save lives. It's a wonderful company to work for, and I'm very excited to be here. Children and friends. I absolutely love my children. And yeah, I, I like my friends, but sometimes friends can get you into trouble, especially if you're unit testing. <laughs> so let's take a look at a class that we might want to test. In this case, we have player stats. I'm imagining a game when you want to start this game with maximum health and zero currency. And we want to check that you have that initial uh, default construction. What I will say is that this is a very simple example, but it extends to very complicated examples. If you have a database, a user interface, uh, parallelism, anything you have, you can still think about how you're going to test it with these ideas. All right. The first thing I want to say is you want to avoid making members public just for the sake of testing. You may have other reasons for making members public, and that's fine, but you don't want to change your code just for the sake of testing. So here's an example, and this is using CXX test. You could use any testing framework whatsoever. Uh, catch is another one that I like to use. And that works fine, except for the problem that we are trying to reach in and test something that's private or protected. So instead, you might have this idea that you're going to let your friend do the testing for you. Here's a helper class, and this friend <coughs> would have the capability of reaching in and dealing with your private data, which you do not want the whole world to see. So I would recommend don't do this. If you don't want to make something public just for the sake of an example, you don't want to have a friend effectively make it public for you. Do we need to test things that are not public? That is debatable. But if you find yourself in a situation with legacy code where you feel like you have to, I recommend that you use children. The way that you would use a child is you would inherit from the class that you're testing, in this case, player stats, and you would go ahead and implement a method to get whatever's private, if you want to test it directly, or you can have test methods that test the things you care about. One thing I'll say about this is you definitely want to test your edge cases. Your unit test is only as good as the thought that you put into it. So be thinking about what's going to be important as you're designing your tests. Finally, you may not want to test anything that's not public in your class. And if you want to avoid testing anything that's private or protected, I suggest that you refactor your class. <clears throat> the way that you would do it in this case is you might have uh, a new class, a health class, and a currency class. And with those two new classes, they could each have a public way of giving the integer representation that you're trying to test. And so this way, with player stats, you don't need to touch it. All you need to do in player stats is test the public interface, and then when you test each of these other classes, again, you're testing their public interface. Like I said, this extends to big complicated messes. We saw it earlier in the week that you can make an approval test. Claire had a talk on that that I really enjoyed. And I would highly recommend this book. If you have legacy code, this tells you how to work effectively with, with it. it. Tells you how to pull it apart without breaking everything so you can get unit tests where you really need them. Finally, uh, what I learned first about really using unit testing it was by going through this test-driven development book. It is not in C++, but all the same, I highly recommend it. It's a good way to see how the test-driven development process works. And from there, you can decide how to be a more effective tester. Thank you. <laughs>